Hello, Libra. My name is Victoria Martin. I'm going to be guiding you through the vicissitudes of February 2016. And this is going to count for Libra Sun Sign or Libra Ascending Sign. I recommend you look at both your Sun Sign and your Ascending Sign forecast. So let's take a look at this. Um, for everybody, the first half of February, the moon will be um, manic and dreamy. And uh, in this case, the sun is moving through your fifth house, emphasizing your special talents, your children, if you have any, and probability estimates, which is a kind of scientific way of saying maximizing your luck, right? Okay, so uh, the second half of February, the sun now at this point moves into your sixth house, duty, uh, duties and job, health and accounting, uh, those sorts of things. And in this case, uh, we're in a different Zodiac signs will pay attention to subtle clues and train your ESP, avoid toxins and shun illusions. This will become clear as we go through step by step. Here's the steps we're going to be taking. The highlights as I have ascertained for February 2016. The new moon, February 6th through 10th, that's the waking up. You're going to see why in a second. The full moon, February 20th through 24th, this is the dreamy manic part. Um, the uh, Sun conjunct Neptune, interesting stories, that's February 25th through March 2nd. Okay, so this new moon, February 6th through 10th, is special because it's the Chinese New Year. And in order to get a grasp on this, I asked my colleague, Pung Yin, to uh, reflect so I can guide you properly. And she said that this is the year of the fire monkey, so that means a jumpy ride. So. Further, she advised that large crowds could cause nervous overload, and you should focus instead on building strong bonds in a more intimate sense, boost your immune system, retreat into the tranquility and beauty of natural settings, curb needless social activity, avoid rushing, avoid technical tech type of pollution, and avoid disturbances. Check out her website. Uh, Feng Shui Master Punyin at punyin.com and uh, for more information about Year of the Fire Monkey. Okay, back to our regular astrology. The new moon is um, in the uh, crossover point or the overlap point between the shoulder of Aquarius here and the tail of the sea boat. Very interesting and this is going to, as I mentioned, affect special talents, children, probability estimates. Kind of interesting stars here. The, uh, the, the tail of the seagull, as it would uh, relate to talent, I guess would be imaginative communicator there at the, on the list, and um, perhaps um, uh, using symbols to create drama, that would be a talent. And then the uh, shoulder of Aquarius is Sa'ad al Sud, very famous star, able to make things flow. Um, you know, in talent, you just want to keep you know, brainstorming, keep things going. Um, give yourself appropriate challenges, be active in hobbies and sports. These are all, you know, impacting and encouraging creativity, also good for children. Okay, so the full moon then will emphasize your spirituality, piety, and dreams, and also neutralizing the nemesis or the shadow or coping with this in, a, in an equitable manner. Um, full moon is also conjunct Jupiter, so there's some luck involved here. Meanwhile, the sun is moving into conjunction to Neptune in your sixth house, emphasizing duties and job and, and, and healing. So let's take a look at the stars in this full moon. The full moon is in the uh, tropical Virgo, but near the constellation of, uh, of Leo. It's in the, um, near the heart of the lion, also in the back of the lion, and um, near a constellation called Sextans, the compass. So we're going to be looking at this in terms of your spirituality. What does this mean? Um, the um, regulus, the um, heart of the lion, um, in terms of your spirituality, I would say that justice motives are part of spirituality, or they could be or should be. Definitely the whole idea of the nemesis, you see that's coming up as both the 12th house and the heart of the lion. So that would suggest that to me it's especially important that you're, you deal very carefully with people or situations that you hate, you know, um, you know, and examine is that something in you you don't like, or is it uh, really just something you want to stay away from? I mean, because they're, you know, they could be divided into those two different things. Um, 
the um, in terms of the the compass um, that uh, spirituality would definitely uh, fit one aspect of the compass guiding souls in turbulent times it might be your own soul but it might be that by helping other people that you in fact get more guidance for yourself and um, the in terms of the star zasma um, which the full moon is also in proximity to the idea of being both performer and therapist is a very interesting um, you know positive good karma uh, 12th house place to be so so essentially this period of February 20th through March 2nd the full moon and then the Sun conjunct Neptune this is the most mystical and potentially confusing time of year empathy and compassion work wonders for everyone be way the fakers out there in this case the full moon in your 12th house emphasizing your spirituality versus the Sun conjunct Neptune in your sixth house is that you have to know who can you really work with and uh, it's certainly in terms of um, toxins is the uh, you know, one big part of good health is eliminating um, the toxins. So here again, the, the um, highlights of February, the new moon, the waking up with the year of the fire monkey, um, the full moon, dreamy and manic, and Sun conjunct Neptune, the interesting stories. Um, and, and this goes right into the time frame uh, around this solar eclipse, which I would say the time window on that would be March 4th through 12th. Uh, There's so going to be a lot of global opinion shifts on topics of religion, patronage, and healing. And this is affecting your sixth house of duty and job. So there might be like, people can't make up their mind. Do they want to be on this side? Do they want to be on that side? And then, um, you know, the whole, and that, 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 how, that, that healing is repeated here, both in terms of my opinion about this solar eclipse in March, and also in terms of your own progress of the whole idea of healing is, uh, would be very strong. And then the lunar eclipse um, dominating the second half of March would be in your seventh house, emphasizing partners' social life. So, you know, the whole trick about the lunar eclipse, they are difficult for females more than for men, and so um, everyone, though, has to be ready for anything. And in this case, might be, you know, kind of close that, that uh, lunar eclipse might be kind of close to your first house while the sun is in your seventh house so that you might be in a leadership position but you have to be careful not to take on too much so that's your heads up on the um, lunar and solar eclipses on March because we're going right into that after the end of February so anyway thank you very much for watching my name is Victoria Martin and have a very 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 excellent month Canlı olarak mobil uygulamamız üzerinden yapıyoruz.